in this video, you guys will be learning the full chapter of straight line and I'm going to cover 11 things and you can win 100 ringgit. So do stick around. Hey, I'm Miss Isha and welcome back to my channel. So today, we are going to be learning about straight line. The full chapter of straight line. So we're going to discuss about number one, everything that you have to know about the equation, which is y equal to mx plus c. And then we will be looking at how to identify from the equation, from the given equation, we want to identify the value of gradient or slope and as well as the y-intercept which is c and then number three from the given gradient which is m and intercept y-intercept how are we going to form the linear equation all right and then we're going to express and find the mc sometimes you see the equation is not really that beautiful so we will arrange it into order y equal to mx plus c and we will find the mnc then we will do the graph sketching okay from equation how to sketch a straight line graph and then we want to form equation from the given graph we only have the graph how we're going to form the equation and then for number seven we're going to check whether given point whether lie on the given equation of the straight line or not and then we will be finding a missing value if it's lying means it's already given a point that is lying on that straight line and now we want to uh, find the missing value and then parallel or not okay we have two equations and then we want to see whether it's parallel or not and then for number 10 we will see we want to form the equation new equation if it is parallel and then point of intersection you have one equation here i mean two equation of straight line and you want to form not form sorry you want to find a point of intersection all right and then finally we will take a look at problem solving usually that's that is the part where we'll be asking exam but you have to know all this in order to answer that problem solving right so you have to stay tuned and about this hundred why am i holding this you guys will have the chance one of you who are watching will win this hundred ring it all right if you want to know how i will let you guys know in this video somewhere in this video i don't know maybe at the end maybe at the middle you have to just watch this i will suddenly talked about it okay it's very easy it's very easy and okay so for number one we want to know about this equation which is y equivalent to mx plus c this is a general formula for a straight line okay where the m over here represent the gradient so the m over here is gradient or if you are not from Malaysia, I think you will call it as a slope. Okay, let's talk a little bit about gradient or slope over here. Okay, so if you have a positive gradient, you, uh, your line will be increasing. How you want to know whether your line is increasing or not? You look at left to right. Okay, you see this line it is increasing. When it is increasing, you're going to have a positive positive gradient okay when it is decreasing again how would you know whether it is increasing or decreasing you take a look at at the line from left to right so this has the negative gradient all right and the higher the value of gradient the more steeper the graph will be more steeper what i meant by that okay so let's say this this one obviously you know have positive gradient right so this have a positive gradient so if i draw something like this this one gonna have a smaller value to this because this line is steeper than this line whereas if i draw something like this this line gonna have higher value of gradient since it is steeper compared to this and this same goes for this all right so if i draw something like this 
is a negative gradient, but it's going to have a smaller constant value, smaller uh, value of m compared to this because this is steeper than this. Whereas if I draw something like this, this one will have higher gradient value with a negative sign because this is steeper than this too. Okay, but you have to remember when you have line like this or like this. Okay, when you have a straight line, as I said, what is gradient? Gradient is actually you want to know how steep is the line. So this is not even steep at all. If this is like straight like this, vertically, if it is straight, then this is not defined. The gradient is not defined. And if you take a look at this line, okay, this one will have a zero gradient. Remember that. You have no steam. You have to remember, sometimes you forgot. Hey, which one? I know that one of it should be not defined and one of it should be zero, but I'm confused. So it's very easy. All you have to know, all you have to do is, you just imagine you are standing here. You can still stand, right? Because it's a straight line. So it's at, at least it has value, which is zero. But this one is not defined. You cannot stand. How, you, how are you going to stand here? You cannot stand. So it's not defined. So that is one tips for you to remember. And then let's talk about this C. This C, if you can see, I circle it with the sign. All right? So this represents the y-intercept. This represents the y-intercept, all right? There are also two formula to find gradient, which is we have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, all right? Or you can also find gradient by using another formula, but this one is only when you have the value of y-intercept and x-intercept. Okay, so this is negative y-intercept over x-intercept. Alright, so second thing that you guys should know is how to identify your gradient m value and y-intercept which is c value from the given equation. So, when it is given negative x plus 5, y equivalent to negative x plus y. So, the gradient over here is, we can see negative x means negative 1x, right? So, the gradient going to be negative 1 because y equivalent to m x plus c. And this going to be our y intercept. So, this one is c equivalent to 5, which is our y intercept and then for this one we have this is actually if you want to see it clearly you can write it as y equivalent to negative 1 over 2 x plus 7 okay now you can see clearly that the m is actually negative 1 over 2 okay so the m is negative 1 over 2 because y equivalent to mx plus c so m is equivalent to negative 1 over 2. And then the c, the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is this one. So c is equivalent to 7. Same goes for this one. Okay, this one we have x this side. So we arranged it first, okay? So I will write it as y equivalent to 5x plus 1. All right? Then we will have the M is 5. So gradient, we have 5. Alright? And then for the Y-intercept, this one, huh? MX plus C, right? So the C is 1. Clear? And finally, if the equation is like this, okay? Y equal to mx plus c. There is no c over there. But we can find our m first. Obviously, this is m. So, m is equivalent to negative 3. 
and C, there's no C, there's no C, which means we can write by ourselves, which is it's going to be 0. So, the C, which is Y intercept is 0. There you have it. Okay, this is the third section. For the third section, you going to write the equation from the given gradient and also Y intercept, which is the C value. So, now... The other way around. So we know the general formula for the straight line is y equivalent to mx plus c. Therefore, this one it's going to be y equivalent to negative 1 over 2x plus c, right? Positive, negative, so negative 4, right? For this one, y equivalent to mx. If the m is 0, 0 times x, it's gone, all right? So now we're just going to have negative 3 m x m is 0 times x becomes 0 plus negative 3 so we will only have this all right and finally for this one y equivalent to m x right so negative 2 over 3 x plus c which is 0 so we can choose not to write there you have it. So, for the next section, we're going to express this into the y equivalent to mx plus c. And then, we want to find what's the value of m and also what's the value of c. So, let's arrange them first. So, I, I want to straight away write this to the left-hand side first because that's going to make it easier. Alright, and then we're going to have 4y. I throw the x to the other side, which is it's going to be here positive. Bring it to that side, it's going to be negative x. Here's positive, so positive 20. Alright, and then I'm going to divide everything by 4 because the relationship between this 4 and y is multiplied. So, or if the relationship over here is multiplied, I can bring it to that side and make it as divide. So I will have y equivalent to negative x plus 20 over 4. Alright, then we can separate them. y equivalent to a negative x over 4 plus 20 over 4. We give this 4 to both. Alright, and then I'll have negative 1 over 4x plus 5. So from this equation, we know that the m is negative 1 over 4 and the c is 5. So there you have it. Okay, now let's take a look at this type. Same question, which is we want to express and find... Uh, which one is M, which one is C. You have two ways of doing this. You can either do it like just now, which is you arrange it first, make it Y as the solo to the left-hand side, and then you can figure out what is M and what is C. Or if you are smart, and if you are alert about another formula, which is this one, all right? Which is Y over Y intercept, which is this is Y intercept plus x over x intercept, which is this is going to be x intercept, equivalent to 1. Alright? Another thing that you have to also know is this one, which is gradient, which is slope, is actually also equivalent to negative y intercept over x intercept. So, we can straight away say that y, because now we want to form it into y equivalent to mx plus c, right? So, equivalent to m, m, m is negative y intercept over x intercept so y intercept is this one which is from this formula this is y intercept so this is y intercept so negative 4 over x intercept x intercept is this one because here we see x over x intercept so the 3 here is x intercept x plus C. C is actually y intercept, which is this one. y intercept, which is over here. y intercept, 4. So we have 4. 
So, from this we know that M is equal to negative 4 over 3. And our C is actually equal to 4. That's it. So, you need to go into the trouble of arranging it and make it y equal to mx plus c which is going to take you forever then only you will reach the answer but of course you have to know that one as well because not for everything you can do this this one is only ap applicable for this kind of equation so we will take a look at one more now we have this equation so we do one step of arrangement just a little bit to make it similar to that one so i'll say y over five i bring oh not this one y over 5, bring this negative to this side, which is I will have plus x over 2 equivalent to 1. So, we know this is y over y intercept plus x over x intercept equivalent to 1. So, we know y intercept is 5 and also x intercept is 2. So, we can straight away form the equation y equivalent to mx plus c so the m here is this one we have negative y intercept over x intercept so negative y intercept which is this one so i will have negative 5 over x intercept which is 2 x plus c c here is y intercept which is this one 5 that's it. That's your equation. And you can say your m is equivalent to negative 5 over 2 and your c is equivalent to 5. There you have it. That's number 5. You have to know how to sketch a straight line graph from the given equation. Alright. So, very easy. All you have to do is find your y-intercept, find your x-intercept and that's it. You can form a straight line. Alright, so let's, uh, what I mean is, okay, we have this equation first of all, we take a look at this tree, this is M, right? We should be aware that this one is increasing because, because the gradient is positive, so it's increasing and we have this as a y-intercept. We already have our y-intercept, so now we just have to find our x-intercept. Remember this x-intercept is when y zero and y-intercept is when x zero okay so we already have y-intercept so that's done so now let's find our x-intercept okay so when y zero so remember x-intercept is when y zero so i have 3x plus 2 equivalent to zero 3x equivalent to negative 2. I bring this to that side. And then x is equivalent to negative. The relationship between these two is multiply. I bring it to this side. It becomes divide. So negative 2 over 3. So now we have our y-intercept. And we also have our x-intercept. Right. So we can sketch the graph. Okay. So let me draw the axis. So we have 2, y-intercept is 2, and x-intercept is somewhere here, negative 2 over 3. So that is our line. Use your ruler. Use your ruler, okay? Alright, so this one is y equivalent to 3, x make sure label, and this is y, this is x. There you have it. Sketching up. Straight line. Next part is you have to know how from the given graph you will form the equation. All right, this is not bad. It's not. I mean, it's not hard. Okay, all you have to do is okay. We know from this graph we have y equivalent to m. By now we already know m is negative y intercept over x intercept. So negative negative 4 which is y intercept over x intercept which is negative 2 x just now negative 4 is this one plus the c the c is y intercept which is negative 4 all right negative negative become positive and then 4 divided by 2 you're going to have 2 
and we have this negative still and then x positive negative negative four that's all okay that's all you have y equivalent to negative 2x minus 4 that is your equation for this graph okay now we want to determine whether this point and this point lies on this straight line or not okay this is very easy you just have to substitute the x value with this one which because this is x y right we substitute x and see whether we can get this y one or not if we get this one then this a lies on this same goes for this one so let's try so for the first one y equivalent to two i substitute this one into the x so one minus three which is equivalent to 2 times 1 is 2, 2 minus 3 is negative 1. We get negative 1. We are supposed to get 1, but we get negative 1. So, no. Nope. This point A does not lie on this equation. Alright? How about this one? Let's check. Y equivalent to 2. X is negative 1 minus 3. So, this one we will have negative 2. Minus 3, which is negative 5. Yes! We do get this negative 5. So, yes. So, we will say that point B lies on the equation, but point A does not. Okay, now we're going to find the missing value. H is missing over here. So, we have this equation. How are we going to find the missing value? So, we just substitute in. So, why we have 3? negative 2 h i mean x is h plus 5 okay i bring this to this side which is become positive 2 h so this 5 remain this 3 over here i bring it to that side and it will become minus 3 so now we have 2 h is equivalent to 2 because 5 minus 3 is 2 h is equivalent to 2 over 2 here the relationship is multiply and then we bring it this side, it will become divide. So I will have 1. So therefore, H is 1. So we just substitute to find the missing value. Okay guys, if you are still here, then congratulations. You made it until section 9. We are at section 9. Okay, so in this section, we're going to see whether two equations are parallel or not. Okay, so... We have this two equation over here. So we want to determine whether they are parallel or not. So in order for two equation, I mean two line to be parallel, their gradient must be the same. They should have the same slope value, gradient value, and value. All these just meant the same. So I would write here parallel equal C gradient all right so what should we do now we would arrange this and find the m value arrange this and find the m value and we're going to see whether they have the same m value or not so let's do exactly that so here i would say we have negative 6 y equivalent to I bring this 2x to that side and I will have negative 2x plus 5. So I don't really like this negative. So I multiply everything by negative 1. So I would have now 6y equivalent to 2x minus 5. Every single sign will change if I multiply it with negative 1. So now we can... We don't want the 6, so I want to throw it to that side. So here the relationship is a multiply. When I bring it to that side, it will become as a divide. So y equivalent to 2 over 6x minus 5 over 6. Both of them have to get this 6. Divide both of them. Okay, so y equivalent to 1 over 3x minus 5 over 6. Okay, so from this, we know that M is equal to 1 over 3. Okay, how about this one? Okay, let's arrange them as well. 
So we have y. I can divide this two by this three. Nine over three x minus twelve over three. So I would have three x minus twelve divided by three. We will have four. Okay. So in this part over here, the gradient which is three. So m two. This is m one. M two is equivalent to three. So I would actually say that M1 is not. Unfortunately, they are not the same. So not equivalent to M2. Therefore, not parallel. They are not parallel. Now let's take a look at one more question to determine whether the straight lines are parallel or not. Okay, so this one I would have y equivalent to x over 3. Divide both of them with 3 because we want to bring this 3 to the other side. So plus 6 over 3. So y equivalent to 1 over 3x plus 2. Right? Then I'll have m1 equivalent to 1 over 3. Y equal to mx plus c, right? So m1 is equivalent to 1 over 3. How about this one? This one, I would say this is actually equivalent to 1 over 3x minus 4. Then m2 is actually equivalent to 1 over 3. So that is, this is m1 and this is m2. You see we have the same value. Therefore, m1 equivalent to m2. So we can say they are parallel. If you have the same gradient, then you are parallel. Okay, if you are not, then you are not. Alright? Okay, now for uh, section number 9. This is the most important part of this chapter. This is the most popular section that will be asked in your exam. Especially in your SPM exam as well as in your PT3 exam now. Alright? So, the question is, form a new straight line equation which are parallel to this and pass through this all right so as we already know if parallel to this they're going to have a same gradient so we can extract the gradient from this okay we can extract the gradient from this what i meant is we will arrange this and find the m so we take that m and then we take this point we will not y equivalent to mx plus c then we can form to find the c first and then we can form the equation all right so let's take a look so from this we will arrange to the form of y equivalent to mx plus c first so y equivalent to this 2x i bring it to that side so it become negative 2x plus 1 so from this equation by just one step i already know that my gradient is going to be negative 2 because y equals to negative 2 plus i mean mx plus 1 so this is the n value and then passing through this point new point right so this is the important information we have now from the remember whenever you want to form a new equation all you need is gradient and a point okay if you are given an equation you extract the gradient and then take a point and form i mean find the c and then form the equation okay if you are only given two points it's still fine all you have to do is find the gradient using y2 m is equivalent to y2 minus y1 or x2 minus x1 you will get the gradient and then use the gradient in one of the point and you can still get them equation okay so for this one y equivalent to mx plus c let me just write that down first so the y here is negative one so we put negative one equivalent to m is negative two x is two and then plus c we want to find c so here i have negative one equivalent to negative four plus c right and then the c value is actually equivalent to negative one this negative 4, I bring it to this side, I will say plus 4. So negative 1 plus 4 is actually 3. So in other words, C is equivalent to 3. So we already have the gradient and we already have our y-intercept. So now we can form the equation. 
So y equivalent to mx, which is negative 2x, plus c, which is 3. So this is the equation that passes through this point and parallel to this point. All right? Next, we're going to talk about point of intersection. All right, before that, if you remember about the 100 ringgit, right? If you want to win that, it's very easy. All you have to do is subscribe to my channel, like this video, and then list in the comment list all the final answer from this video. All right, there should be a card from this video. Okay, list the final answer. I will choose the winner and pinned their comment after this video reached 1,000 views. And by the way, guys, if you want uh, this video to reach 1K view as soon as possible, so you have to share, share the love, share the knowledge. I know there is some issue with my lighting. I already have a lighting here and there. And there, but it's still somehow dark. I cannot put the lighting in front of me, guys. Because if I put the light, any kind of light in front of me, it gonna reflect back to you. Okay, it's gonna be just worse. So that's why you see there's no light. There's no good light that facing my face. I'm still finding a way to solve this. So bear with me. Don't give up on me yet. Okay. I'm going to find a way. I promise I'm going to find a way. Alright? Very soon. Okay. So, now. We are at the 11th section. Alright? We are at the 11th section. Alright. So, we have two equations. From this two equation, we want to find the point of intersection. So, when we want to find the point of intersection, all we have to do is find... All we have to do is simultaneous equation. By solving the simultaneous equation, we're going to get our x value and our y value. Alright? So when we have our x and y, we put it in a coordinate form and voila! That's it. You would have the coordinate point of intersection. Alright? So you can choose whether you want to do this in substitution method or in elimination method. So... Let's see. So this one is number one. I would say this is one. Let's label them first. This is one and this is two. All right. Hmm. I would... Okay, first, uh, for us to do elimination method, we want to make this x equal or the y equal. The same value. So now I see here the y is one. Here the y is two. So if I times this with two, then I can eliminate that. All right, so I will take equation 2 times 2. All right, then I'll have 6x plus, because it's times 2, 6x. Y times 2, 2y. 14 times 2, 28. Hmm. So now I can name this as my third equation. All right, okay. So now we can eliminate this y by, okay, if you have same sign, okay, we want to eliminate this, huh? We want to eliminate this. Okay, if you have, you remember this, same sign minus different sign plus, then they will be eliminated. So in this case, the sign are the same, so we minus. So I will take 3 minus 1, okay? So 3, you can also 1 minus 3, no problem. But since we have bigger value here, so I take 3 minus 1. So 3 minus 1. If it is equation, then you put a circle. If it is not an equation like this one, this is 2, this is number, not equation. So I didn't circle it, right? That is just a technical part that you have to know as well. So 6 minus 1, 6x minus 1x, I would have 5x. This minus this, gone, eliminated. That's what we want. Mission accomplished. 28 minus 3, 25. So x over here is 25 divided by 5. I bring this 5 to that side. Here the relationship is multiplied. Bring it to that side, it will be divided. So x is equivalent to 5. So now, I can substitute 5. Substitute x equivalent to 5 into 
into what? Into two. I want to choose two. You can choose any. I want to choose two because two, the y is already solo. We want to find y. So this is the easiest line for us to substitute. So three, five, okay, plus y equivalent to 14. So y equivalent to 14. Here, 3 times 5 is 15. This 15, I'm bringing it to this side to become minus 15, which I would have negative 1. Then we have our point of intersection. We have x5 and y negative 1. So, uh, therefore, the answer is 5, negative 1. This is the point of intersection. Final section, exam type question. Actually, all we learn can be asked in the exam, but this is just something bonus, all right? So we have three coordinates over here. The question is, find the value of h if these three points are in a same line. So, hmm, so we have to think carefully. What is this even mean? It means that they have the same gradient. If they are in the same line, they should have the same gradient. So we can use that info to find the value of h. So I can see that I take these two points. So I'll say m2 minus m1. So h minus negative 2 over x2 minus x1. So 2 minus negative 1 equivalent to y2 minus y1 from this one. We can use now this and this, the second gradient. Don't use, if you, if you want to use this and this, there's nothing wrong with that. Go ahead. Okay, I want to use this one because we, there's no unknown here already. So we have all the complete values. So I will say 6 minus negative 2, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, 3 minus negative 1. Okay, and then you will have h plus 2 over 2 plus 1 equivalent to 6 plus 2 over 3 plus 1. Okay, and then h plus 2 equivalent to 6 plus 2 is 8 over 3 plus 1 is 4, right? Okay, and then this one, 2 plus 1 is 3, so I bring the 3 over here. Because here the relationship is divide. So if I bring it to that side, it will become multiply. So h plus 2 equivalent to 8 divided by 4 is 2. 2 multiplied by 3 is 6. 6. So h is actually equal to 6 minus 2, which is 4. There you have it. So that's all guys. Congratulations. You guys, if you watch this from the first until the end you already cover we already covered the full chapter so congratulations hopefully you can answer uh, the exam questions okay of course there is some tricky question okay i will be discussing as well coming soon but as a concept and as a chapter itself we already managed to cover the full chapter all right so i do have more videos okay i do have about trigo i do have about probability a lot and lots and lots of video about probability trigo i do have a video how to expand algebraic expression i have binomial distribution even special binomial distribution i have it in i have it in malay and as well as in english okay i have binomial distribution and taburan binomial okay i don't know whether i should continue in vm or not i think i want to focus on english from now on but you can let me know down below if you want in vm as well so yeah do subscribe and do like the video all right so see you in my other video which is now okay so just click 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 somewhere over there okay okay bye